Hello and welcome back to a rather exciting Doctor Who product review. In today's review I'm going to be taking a look at one of the latest releases as a part of the Big Chief Studios 1-6 scale character replica figure series, and it is of course the signature edition of the 13th Doctor 1-6 scale replica figure as portrayed by none other than Jodie Whittaker. This review and product has been a long time coming, I've waited many many years for this figure to be released, and that isn't indeed an exaggeration. I've had this figure on pre-order for a long, long time, so it's a joy to finally be able to add it to the collection. Now, I've actually had this figure now for quite a number of months, however, due to my final university exams, it has been a long time coming, this review. I've been filming it, editing it, filming a bit more, reviewing a bit more, and yes, now it's finally here, so I really hope you enjoy it. It's going to be a slightly longer review than usual, however, there are lots of things to cover, I think it is fair to say. Now, as always with my Big Chief Studios reviews, this is going to be quite a long product review, so if you like short and snappy reviews, apologies, I want to do a long video to take a look at the figure in detail and actually do it justice, so maybe grab yourself a cup of tea or something like that. So taking a look at the packaging that the 13th Doctor 1-6 scale character replica figure comes in, it is very unique and very bold, and unlike any of the other Big Chief Studios packaging that we've seen to date. So as you can see on camera, it is in fact rather difficult to pick up because it just looks like a massive shiny box, but this is a lovely light bluey green design, and we have the TARDIS there in the very centre. It is very difficult to pick up on camera, but does look very cool in person. Front of the box basically incorporates the shade of the 13th Doctor's TARDIS exterior box, complete with the details of the signage at the very top and the pull to open sign. In the centre we get the BBC logo as well as the stacked variation of the 13th Doctor era logo, this time with the lovely glowing orange design. And at the bottom we get some text which has been completed with a lovely shiny silver finish including the title of the product, the newest version of the Big Chief Studios logo, as well as stating that this is a signature edition from the Collector series. Sides of the box continue the lovely shiny design including the title of the product once again and the shiny Doctor Who logo. And very much like the third Doctor, the lid is finished off rather beautifully with a trim of Gallifreyan text running along the bottom. And as for the bottom of the lid, this contains quite a lot of company information, as well as stating that this item is not suitable for younger Doctor Who fans. This product is limited edition to 500 units worldwide, and mine is number 405, and this is of course the signature edition. As for the very top of the lid, this once again features the Doctor Who logo in the stacked formation. I don't quite know why, but for some reason the 13th Doctor box is in fact ever so slightly more squat compared to the previous Big Chief Studios releases, very much I suppose like a TARDIS exterior box. So now turning around to the back of the packaging, we have this absolutely stunning design. Once again, we're continuing that rather glossy embossed box, so it is quite hard to see at some points and at certain angles in the light. However, we do have a lovely image of the 13th Doctor wielding her sonic screwdriver. I love the way that the glow from the Sonic also appears to double for our planet in the background and then the orange glow from this is coming down onto the 13th Doctor's face, creating a very warm looking reflection. It makes the figure look very cool, especially on that darker green background. As for the bottom of the box, once again we get the repetition of the Big Chief, BBC and Doctor Who logos, as well as having a little write-up about the 13th Doctor herself, a little bit about her personality, her companions, and Doctor Who Series 11. As I mentioned in the unboxing video for this product, which is many many months ago by this point in fact, sadly my box does have a big crease running down the side, which was there when I initially opened it, which is another reason why I prefer the initial packaging, because it was much easier to keep intact and undamaged, you could remove the trays easily. The type of packaging does in fact adopt the new Big Chief style, therefore the lid actually acts a bit like a shoebox lid really, sliding off the top as so. The inner main box is also shiny, no surprises there, continuing the Starfield design with a lovely bluey glow. On one side you have the credits for all the talented people who have worked on this release. And then flipping around to the opposite side we get the figure's specifications, listing all the costume components, as well as a list of the accessories. Off the box also contains the circular Who logo, which is very simplistic, but effective. 
All Big Chief Studios figures do come with a background and this one is no exception. Of course, initially the lid of the box used to be the background and personally I much preferred that design of box because it felt much better quality. The background is now in fact a separate piece of card. So background one is a rather lovely shot of the TARDIS exterior box from Doctor Who Series 11. Lots of lovely detailing on this. At certain angles, this is actually a really nice display option to make it look like the 13th Doctor is stood outside of her TARDIS, although of course the scale is a little bit off. And then flipping around to the opposite side of the card, the other backdrop is of course the 13th Doctor's TARDIS console room, if you like it or not. This is in fact a really lovely image of this TARDIS console room, I think. I'm not particularly much of a fan of this console myself, but I do think it looks pretty cool on this image. A very crisp, high quality image with lots of smaller details on it. Much like any other Doctor Who Big Chief Studios figure, the product is split into two display trays, so the first of which we have the large tray for the figure itself, multiple accessories as well as the putting there at the very bottom, and then we have the smaller tray for the bigger accessories including the base and its two component parts, as well as in particular for the 13th Doctor there, her alternative shirt at the bottom. When this figure was initially announced, I really was not expecting for them to do a signature edition. I think that is something that is considerably rare in modern times when it comes to new series Doctors. However, I was absolutely overjoyed when they announced that they were indeed doing a signature version. In fact, all these versions of the 13th Doctor do indeed come with a signature plaque. So it does, of course, state there at the very bottom that it's a limited edition to 500 units. Mine is unit 405. And at the very top, we do have the title of the set. Of course, this is a sixth scale character replica figure, and what I love about this is we have a lot of space in there to really clearly have Jodie Whittaker's signature. Of course, this is authentic. It's not a print or anything like that. This has been hand signed, and it really is an excellent selling point for this figure and really adding to its value. This is your regular type of Big Chief plaque, so it is a rather lovely quality. On the back we do have some sticky back stuff which can be placed onto a plaque base. Although, despite the contents of this set, one has not been included, meaning you kind of just have this plaque with no actual base piece. I do believe that Big Chief intend to supply some eventually, I hope. For those of you that are unaware, this is the type of stand that should have came of this figure. However, sadly, is not present, which really is a shame, because once the plaque has been applied, it looks really good on the shelf. So here we have the Big Chief Studios 1 6 scale replica figure of the 13th Doctor out of the box. And as always of this series, I'm absolutely blown away with the quality. The head sculpts are incredible, the tailoring on the costume is beautiful, and of course we have a plethora of accessories and hands, as well as this edition being a signature edition, which is very exciting indeed. Now this is of course the 13th Doctor as seen within Series 11, so as a result of the costume and the accessories are all Series 11 themed, because that is when this figure actually went on sale to order. It's just taken quite a while to get this figure into our actual hands. Comparing the 13th Doctor's costume to that of the 3rd Doctor, especially given that both Big Chief figures came out at the same time, I think it will be a fair statement to say that the 3rd Doctor's costume is much more complex in design and components compared to this release. But that said, I would actually go as far to say that this is possibly one of the most accurate Big Chiefs to date. It certainly looks the part. I think that all the components sit incredibly well on the Atomic's body structure to the extent where all of the different materials work incredibly well together. We have the rather structured angular trousers, the woolen looking jumper, and then of course that naturally flowing design of the coat there as well, sitting very well on the body. So overall for the costume, I'm really, really impressed with it. One of the first things that I noticed about this figure is that you really don't need to spend that much time actually trying to make the figure look good, because with the vast majority of Big Chiefs, you need to reshuffle the clothing, make sure the jacket's fastened right, pull the trousers ever so slightly, reshuffle the arms, but with this figure, simply everything sits in place, and it looks nice always. The first aspect of the outfit that we're going to be taking a look at is the overcoat, which has been replicated in a rather accurate manner and seems to use a very, very precise colour palette. To start with, I absolutely love the way that this actually sits on the 13th Doctor's body, because within the TV show itself, it's very unusual. It doesn't really sit like a normal coat, it almost sits like a costume, I suppose. And that has kind of been replicated here due to the very light material which has been used. 
So once you've positioned it correctly, you can of course have the blue lining being exposed down the center of the court itself. You have the rainbows coming down either side. The transition between the lighter blue of the court, then the rainbow, then the darker inner lining is almost seamless. It is incredibly neat for the scale. I'm really impressed by this because normally on some of the other releases that we've seen in the past, there's been a little bit of stitching visible in between where the materials connect together. But this is incredibly precise. It's a nice selection of colour. We have a little bit of a lighter blue, a yellow, and a little bit of a glimpse of a red in there as well. And this does, of course, run down the entirety of the court all the way to the very bottom on either side. Actually, of course, the outside of the 13th Doctor's Court isn't the only part of this piece of clothing to feature some lovely detailing. The entirety of the inner lining of the court has been covered in this lovely dark blue lining. What I can recall, I believe this is meant to represent the depths of space that the 13th Doctor has fell from within the woman who fell to Earth. Especially under this bright lighting, I really love the way that this darker blue shimmers under the vibrant lights. I also think it is a really lovely contrast to the blue seen on the trousers. This lovely darker blue also continues onto the bottom lining of the coat with this outer trim. Turning to the side ever so slightly to take a look at the colour of the coat itself, this is a rather light blue, almost light grey design, but what this does mean is that some of those smaller details do in fact stand out quite a lot. So again we have the stitching coming up the sides here, as well as the cuff detailing and pockets stand Where possible the coat has attempted to stick to TV accuracy, so therefore we have two pockets on either side of the jacket. A lovely attention to detail is the darker blue lining around the side of the pocket lid. Again, some excellent stitch work on this. Do note though, the pocket is in fact fake and imitation. You can't put anything on the inside. Due to the jacket overall being a very light colour with very little pattern going on, some of those details which will normally be quite hard to spot are very easy to spot. So we have this lovely diagonal darker blue line which has been used on the extended cuffs of the jacket, although this doesn't go completely all the way around, much like the on-screen coat. One of my personal favourite details on this entire figure is the inclusion of the lilac inner lining. This is such a small yet lovely detail. Of course, within the TV show itself, this has been Included to reference the suffragette movement. On the shoulders of the 13th Doctor, we do have what is possibly the most underused aspect of her costume, and it is the hood. I do believe we've never actually seen her use this practically within the series itself, although we did have a promotional image where they used it. I think it was in fact one of the first for Series 11. So again, this is really lovely, nicely stitched in place. So much like the rest of the coat, the darker blue lining is also present within the middle, and this is once again really neatly stitched together. You guessed it, the hood in fact does work, you can simply pull this over the 13th Doctor's head, and with a little bit of repositioning and posing, you could make this look really good on display. It's great to be able to have an additional display option, although there isn't any wire within the hood itself, which can make it a little bit difficult to pose. Always of these figures, one of the additional benefits is due to this being made of actual material, is that you do get some natural creasing forming. So flipping around to the back here, we get a little bit of a closer look at the shade of the coat itself, that rather unusual bluey grey, and then the continuation of this stitching running down the very centre. We also have a parting here in the very middle, as well as two further stitching lines coming down the side. I wouldn't say that this is a precise fit at all, but to be honest, I don't actually think it is within the TV show either. Shoulders is perhaps one of the best examples of why I think this is possibly some of the best tailoring that we've seen on a Big Chief to date, as usually the shoulders is where some of the excess baggage tends to collect. And yet, no matter what pose or angle the figure seems to be at, the coat seems to sit rather perfectly on the figure's body. Final note on the coat, and something of which that I'm really happy to see included, is the return of the posable wire in the very bottom of the coat. Now this is very flexible, as you can see, and through the use of this you can pose the coat in any way you would like, in a windswept position or a dramatic pose. It looks incredibly cool indeed. I know that some people aren't a fan of the portable wires in longer coats because it makes the figure look unnatural when it comes to the material sitting on the body, but personally I think it makes photography look so much better. Removing the 13th Doctor's coat is a relatively easy task. The first thing that you need to do is remove the hands. Once the hands have been removed, simply pull back the arms on the jacket and then you can slide it off rather easily as so. 
So now the long coat has been removed, we get to take a closer look at the Treadmark Rainbow Jumper. Now this is of course the maroon pink version, seen episodes the likes of Rosa, and overall I definitely prefer this jumper in the context of this set compared to the darker navy blue, simply because it divides up the various shades of blue within the costume. It looks absolutely excellent. Once more, I think that this sits really naturally on the figure's body, it's rather tightly fit, there's not too much excess material. The rainbow itself has been physically printed onto the jumper and this does of course feature a range of colours from oranges, darker blues, a little bit of yellow in there as well. Of course due to the general colour of this version of the jumper, the rainbow itself doesn't stand out as much as it does on the darker navy blue. And whilst we're taking a closer look at the jumper itself, I think you can definitely tell that the material which has been used to replicate this jumper is rather effective. It does look like a woolen design, which I think especially when compared alongside the trousers, the braces and the white shirt, this works very well. Very unusually, the jumper does stretch onto the shoulders. Again, this has been really neatly stitched together, kind of hidden by the braces though. And then we have the white shirt underneath, which does peek out ever so slightly just underneath the neck. And overall, this fits together, in fact, quite well. Now the long coat has been removed, I am going to talk about one of my least favourite aspects of this figure, and it is the neck. I think that when the coat is removed, the problem is a little bit more obvious, and it was something that I was aware of when the initial publicity images went out for this figure, and it's that the neck is simply too long in my opinion. I think it looks way too long, longer than it needs to be. It does create this kind of giraffe neck even more so when the coat is removed. I think that when the coat's on you can just about get away with it as well as fiddling with a few angles here and there. The neck is also a little bit glossy which is a bit unusual however I don't mind too much although we do have a few sculpting details on this to make the figure look a little bit more realistic. Whilst the coat is removed, we might as well talk about the white shirt underneath as well. There's not really any detailing on this. It covers the entirety of the torso underneath the jumper, as well as extending down the arms as well. The white long sleeve jumper fits on the body incredibly snugly, and once again, due to being made out of some great material, it creates some nice formations of natural creasing. Of course, one of the main variations of the 13th Doctor's outfit is multiple different jumpers with the rainbow design. Therefore, I'm going to bring in the other optional alternative for the costume now and take a look at it. Due to the darker colour, of course, the rainbow is much more prominent. Once again, some lovely colouring on this, and it does, of course, also continue around to the back as well. The same lovely material has been used on this compared to that of the pink shirt, although, sadly, it is virtually impossible to get on. I've tried, and I've not got it on properly. Simply because the braces are incredibly difficult, I'm going to be covering them a little bit later on because there's a few additional problems with those. And uh, the costume is that well tailored to the body. It is just very 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 difficult to swap out in this scale which is a little bit of a shame because it would have been nice to flip them around and you know alternate however I, I'm just not going to risk it I feel like the more I risk it I'm going to damage the figure and that is not the best but I just want to keep my figure safe to be honest. Now I will not be swapping over the jumper I'm not going to risk it however my friend and fellow collector Macaulay has so just briefly showing the figure on his Instagram there who merch collector 07 go and give him a follow that's what the figure looks like with the jumper in place so either way it looks excellent and one of my personal favourite material uses for this 13th Doctor outfit is the pleather appearance of the material used to connect the braces to the trousers. This is a really intricately tailored piece. I love the way it's connected, it's very strong. And then we have the plastic buckle in there as well to connect to the yellow ribbon. They've chosen a really good yellow for the brace itself, I think that this looks very truthful to that of the actual costume from the TV show, however the material which has been used isn't the best. I think that this, it basically feels like paper to be quite honest, it's not paper, but it does feel very very delicate compared to the rest of the body, so as a result it does sit very unusually, as you can see there just by touching it, it's kind of popping over onto the piece underneath the neck as opposed to staying firmly on the side of the shoulder of where it's meant to be. This is one of the other reasons why I do not like the braces, because having attempted to take off the jumper to replace it with the navy blue one, plus the fact that the material on the yellow section is rather delicate, it basically snaps in two. Uh, well, it doesn't snap, this piece basically doesn't stay together, so as a result, all of the pressure of trying to hold the braces in place basically detaches the material, and as a result, it's broken. So, it's not the best. 
I've had this figure in my collection now for a good few months, and I've also had this super glue in my room for a good few months, and I'm hoping when I eventually pluck up the courage, I'll be able to add a small dab to the top of this brace and hopefully glue it back in place. But I wanted to show you it for this review because it is indeed a problem with this figure that I believe one or two other people have also had as well. And whilst we're taking a look at the back of the outfit, it's basically exactly the same as the front. The rainbow continues onto the back, and we also have the white shirt sleeve jumper in there as well. Little update, as I kid you not, this review has been filmed over a period of about half a year due to rather stressful university exams. I did in fact eventually pluck up the courage to use the super glue, and it did indeed work. So if this does happen to your braces, as I imagine it pretty much will, purchase a super glue like this, and hopefully you'll be able to glue it back together just fine. So now moving down the figure to take a look at the trousers. Now these are one of the most iconic parts of the costume which were taken by Jodie from a photo that she found of a woman walking along looking like she's on a mission and the trousers were incredibly angular, very box-like, in particular towards the lower half of the leg and that has been excellently represented with the material used to replicate these trousers. I think that they're once again a very angular but also due to them being made of material they sit very naturally on the body with creases is naturally collecting where they would on a normal human. Not only that, they're also very angular towards the bottom, meaning that we get that very sudden end to the trouser, very much like the image that initially inspired this costume. I really like the addition of this small lip which has been stitched into the material. It really neatly brings the trousers to an end and again very much looks like the costume. Down the entirety of the trouser leg side we also have an additional stitching line which again is very neat. I think that the tailoring overall on these recent Big Chiefs has been some of the strongest which they've ever done. It really naturally sits to the body, it doesn't leave any awful baggy space. I think one of the best examples of the creasing really bringing this figure to life is around the pockets. Again, these have been really neatly stitched together and look excellent, very much in scale. These aren't imitation pockets, they do indeed work, so you can in fact put accessories into the 13th Doctor's side, which is really effective, or you could make it look like her hands are hidden within her pockets. One of the less effective sides to the trousers is this piece here in the very middle. We have the flies, which overall are fairly neatly stitched together. We have a little bit of a seam running up there, but the worst bit is probably this piece at the top here where they have been velcroed together. This isn't regular velcro, it's kind of miniature model style velcro, so overall it is considerably neat. It's certainly one of the more neat big chief figures which have been released, although sadly there is still a little bit of a line there. It does look ever so slightly bulky, but to be quite honest again, that's just me being picky. I really don't think it matters too much. Overall, visually, it most certainly looks the part. Ping around to the back, there isn't really too much to talk about. We just have a continuation of that stitching, again looking incredibly neat, really impressed with this. It's most certainly one of the strongest figures that Big Chief have done. From a colouring perspective, I also think actually they've done quite a good job. I think on some of the other representations of the 13th Doctor that we've seen in the past, some have got the trousers a bit too dark, some of them have got them a bit too light. I think that this is a perfect middle ground. I think that they have a nice blend of vibrancy and darkness, again down to the material which has been used. Some areas look lighter than others depending on where the creases sit, which I think looks very cool and natural. So yeah, I'm really impressed with these. One of my personal favourite aspects of the 13th Doctor's costume is these socks. They're absolutely excellent. I really do love these. They stand out quite a lot. Of course, we have a series of lighter and darker blues in a lined formation, and these are excellent for the scale. They look like real socks and do indeed have a woolen texture as well. These are a partial design, so give the illusion of, of course, them carrying on into the boot. They aren't. They're just a band which goes around this part of the leg, so these look very cool indeed. Moving down to the very bottom of the costume now, we have the 13th Doctor's boots. Now these are of course made out of a plastic and therefore pretty much have the same detailing that you would come to expect from a very high quality, high end action figure. So these have some excellent sculpting tilting around to the side. You can see that we have a little bit of strain on the leather here where it actually sits on the action figure's body very much like how it would within real life when it comes to wear and tear fitting to the user's foot. So we do of course have a little bit of detailing around here even going onto the top of the shoe as well overall this has been painted in a rather lovely light brown what i really do love about the paint application is we even have a golden highlight on these little holes here which do of course keep the laces in place and the laces themselves have also been given a very very intricate and sharp paint application being of course tied midway and we have a lighter brown which has been used on them as well
back of the boot features some additional support as well as the label of the boot sticking out of the back. Again, very realistic. The base of the boot has been given a slightly darker paint application to give the impression of the boot sole, although surprisingly no additional wash has been applied over the top of this to replicate wear and tear, something of which that has been present on some previous Big Chief figures. To be quite honest, it would have been nice to see this included, but I'm not particularly bothered, it's me being very petty indeed. A very brief note on articulation, I'm not going to talk about this in too much detail, it is as per usual a Big Chief 1.6 scale animatronics body with over 30 points of articulation, meaning this figure is incredibly highly pausable as hopefully has been presented throughout this review at various points. It is in fact a very sturdy 1.6 scale figure, meaning that it can definitely hold a pause, which I'm very happy to see, especially given that some of the earlier releases in this series had some considerably floppy joints. This one is the exact opposite of that. It's a very stiff figure, which I'm very happy with. So now that we've taken a look at the costume, now let's take a look at the 13th Doctor's head. Now I was going to try and find something to put the other head on, however I just concluded that this was easier and quite frankly I think I've created a scene out of a horror film. So here we have the two different 13th Doctor heads which have been provided with this collector's edition. The first of which is a rather serious expression, which is the one that she is currently wearing. This was the initial head that was sculpted, however after a little bit of criticism and feedback from Big Chief fans it was decided that his second head will be created with a much more positive kind of smirk expression, which personally I like more. Generally both heads share rather similar detail, however I think that the other one just looks quite sinister, especially when she's holding the other head. <laughs> So the first head that we're going to be taking a look at is the more positive kind of smirk expression, even though this is in fact the alternative second head that cause this is the head that I displayed my 13th Doctor figure with because personally I like it a lot more than the original version. I think it's much more reminiscent of the 13th Doctor's personality, kind of that childish quirk, excited to see the universe as opposed to the too serious head that was created for this figure initially start off with, the skin pigment on the face is absolutely superb. They've most certainly captured that likeness to Jodie Whittaker. We have lots of lovely colours which have been used on the skin to create a really lovely complexion. Of course, under the eyes, we have an ever so slightly darker colour which has been used to kind of create some natural shading, including a little bit of eye shadow. But equally, of course, generally around the face, we have a few dents and imperfections to very much create that realistic look. And again, really bring the piece to life. Detailing around the eyes is absolutely incredible. As always, we have that rather creepy, wet, kind of glazed effect, which makes the eyes look incredibly lifelike. But we also have those really tiny, intricate details of the iris, the colouring around the eye, as well as even some small pink sections off to the side to kind of create the outer edge of the eye itself. Of course, we even have little eyelashes which have been painted onto the side. Again, of course, the eyebrows have been painted excellently as well. Not too over the top, a lovely lighter brown which has been used here ever so slightly lighter to the eyelashes. For the lips, these have been given a lovely vibrant pink finish, really making them stand out. I in particular really do like the small little dimples towards the side of the face, of course creating that impression that the 13th Doctor is smiling. As we turn towards the opposite side, we do in fact have a few additional details which are usually not present on a Doctor figure. Of course, most notably, we have the detailing around the ears, but also the 13th Doctor's earring, including the silver chin. Even you can make out the detailing of the hands, which are of course holding each other with that that lovely golden bronzy highlight. As for the actual hair itself, this is kind of in more of a bob fashion compared to the second head, so it's a little bit more circular, which I think most certainly looks like the 13th Doctor's hair within the TV show itself. But again, we have some lovely detailing on the hair to rid of individual strands, lots of details coming off to the side. We have also that general impression of levels within the hair itself. Some of the strands end earlier than others, especially here towards the bottom, which I think is very cool indeed. And then of course you have that overall finish on the hair, lots of different shades have been used on this again, so we have various different shades of yellow, but also overall that darker wash which has been applied as well, in particular around these roots here at the very top. Again, this is something that on the character options figure that was ever so slightly over the top, it kind of looked like a spider was plonked on her head. So now moving on to the second head, the much more serious expression, which rather coincidentally is kind of how the 13th Doctor has gone within her later episodes. Having experienced Flux, this is what she looks like, done with life. 
Um, so I'm not going to go through all of the details again because I've just gone through it with pretty much the other head because we generally have the same idea, again the same compliment stand, the eyes are absolutely stunning, the eyebrows have been picked out with superb detailing as well. I think the complexion on this figure stands out a bit more, probably because there's less expression so you can really see that attention to detail on the face. It's not simply a block colour, there's lots of lovely imperfections but also the subtle detailing of the eye bags in particular on this head I think really do stand out quite a lot. There's just something about this head which looks a little bit sad, kind of like glazed over and a little bit expressionless, so I'm very happy that the other head has been supplied, but equally at the same time, this is an excellent shot for those more moody photography sessions that you may do if you want a dramatic shot for the 13th Doctor. So again, some excellent detailing on the hair. Of course, this time round we have a slightly more sort of straight down effect which has been used as compared to this head here, which is kind of more circular as I've already mentioned. So yes, the hair does go down ever so slightly longer. If anything, the strands actually stand out a bit more. It's actually quite impressive the way that we have these various different strands underneath here, including this very intricate strand coming down the side of the face, again looking very lifelike indeed. It's a bit more bright yellow in finish, I think, compared to the other head, but equally we also have that lovely brush stroke of darker colour here. To me, it is absolutely crazy to think that the first images of this piece of merchandise that we've seen released were before Doctor Who Series 11 even aired, and now that we finally have it within our collections in 2022, we have very quickly coming to the end of the 13th Doctor era with Jodie's final episode being the BBC Centenary Special coming later this year before we welcome David Tennant back as the Doctor once again. Who's seen that coming? Certainly not me. But this figure has without a doubt been a long time coming which is rather frustrating but external factors have prevented this figure coming out. Uh, but of course it is pretty much the definitive version of the 13th Doctor. There will never be a piece of Doctor Who merchandise I think that beats this figure from a detail perspective. Perspective. The likeness is superb, both of the head sculpts, the accessories are brilliant, but also the costume is the most detailed that we will ever see in merchandise form. I'm very happy to have this as part of my collection as being basically the definitive piece of 13th Doctor merchandise that I will no doubt ever own. So now that we've seen the 13th Doctor herself in detail, now let's move on to what she comes with, including many accessories and of course swappable hands. Now some of these accessories we have already taken a look at, including the swappable head, plaque and jumper, so we won't be taking a look at those again, but there is still quite a lot of other stuff that she comes with. So starting off with the 13th Doctor's main accessory, and one of which that she likes to use on quite a regular basis, it is of course the sonic screwdriver. The 13th Doctor comes packaged with two different variations, including both a amber light as well as a blue light. Both of these are sculpted superbly, really capturing the prop from the show itself, that lovely blend between Sheffield steel, but also that lovely crystal finish at the top of the emitter as well. From what I can tell, the sonic screwdriver has been sculpted in the transparent plastic and then that lovely metal finish has been applied over the top. Now for the scale, this has lots of really impressive details, mimicking the various different sections of metal on the sonic and even that curved handle at the very end. I'm not quite sure if the blue sonic is meant to represent the sonic being switched off because I can't recall it actually having like a blue setting or anything like that, but either way it looks lovely and is virtually the same amber version except blue. And of course, through the use of the specifically posed hand, you can have the 13th Doctor hold the sonic in lots of dynamic and exciting pauses. Next up, a relatively traditional accessory for new series Doctors really have the psychic paper. This does of course have the white panel there where any information can of course show. And then on the back we have a very subtle small design, kind of like a little pattern made this time around out of the slightly thicker plastic, therefore it doesn't actually close. See, oh, it does kind of bend together, although it doesn't hold in place. Yes, this is nice and a great accessory to pause. Although not as frequently used within the 13th Doctor era, it's still a nice addition. Now we have the Kablam themed accessories, starting off with the 13th Doctor's delivery. It is of course her fez. Now rather bafflingly, of course the 11th Doctor did also come with a fez, but this is a brand new sculpt. I don't quite know why they've done a new sculpt, it really wouldn't have mattered to be honest. If this isn't the type of obscure comparison that you subscribe to the host productions for, I don't quite know what is. Here's the 13th Doctor fez alongside the 11th Doctor Series 7B fez. Now there is a number of differences, of course most notably we have this material coming down the 
the side here as opposed to this plastic piece at the very top. But also the entire shape of this fez is also quite different. It's much smaller, it's got a lovely vibrant red finish which is ever so slightly different to the shade used on the 11th Doctor fez. And then of course most notably as we turn the fezes upside down we don't have any lining inside the 13th Doctor version. However for the Series 7B 11th Doctor we have this lovely brand design. So not as much detail on this latest version but you get the idea of what it's meant to be. Unlike the 11th Doctor figure, Jodie doesn't come with a separate headpiece so you can physically put the fez on the head and make it look like she's wearing it. You can kind of just balance it on top of her head, which doesn't necessarily look the best. It kind of still looks the part, but isn't the most effective. But to be honest, I completely understand why a separate headpiece hasn't been included, simply because she literally wears it for a fraction of a second within the story itself. Now within the story, the 13th Doctor's fez did of course come from Id Kablam Delivery Box, and is exactly what has been provided here. This is an excellent little design, very basic of course, it is simply a cardboard template. In fact it is flat pack which is kind of why I'm forcibly holding it down to the floor just to give a good look at the design. So you have the logo on each side along with a little barcode there and then we have a continuation of that design around the sides. At the very top we do also have a little panel, you can put the fez on the inside of course and then we have even the little ribbon there at the very top to give it its cube-like effect. Now this can indeed be taped down, it does have a little bit of sellotape double-sided on the bottom flaps. I've not done this yet. This box will be getting put into storage and then travelling home to Hosty HQ at some point, so I didn't want to damage it. And of course, when you do some shopping online, it always comes with a receipt, and that is exactly what we have here, a little Kablam receipt. This is excellent for the scale, again, following the Kablam house style, even with the logo there at the very top. This is a really basic accessory, but effective nevertheless. And of course, flipping it around to the back, we have dot 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 help me, which does of course spark the entire narrative of Kablam within series 11. So yes, a great little touch and excellent to go alongside the fez. And finally, for the 13th Doctor's accessories, can you call this an accessory? It's basically an entire creature. It is, of course, the Pating, ending off on a rather extreme high. What a brilliant little piece this is, and I love the fact that from getting this figure, I basically now have for the collection probably what is going to be the most accurate ever representation of the Pating. For the scale, this thing is so authentic. It is literally like having a tiny little version of the character from the story, and the Paint application is superb. You may be able to tell actually taking a closer look at the face here, we do have a few highlights, a really excellent design, even a few lighter pink applications around the side of the eyelids, and then the entirety of the skin kind of has this stippled effect to make it look like flesh. It kind of has a rather natural design. Again, this has been really emphasised by the sculpt. We have the two little tiny nostrils along with a few stipples around the side of the mouth where we have a bit of a strain on kind of the creasing of the skin. The teeth have been excellently picked out with a sharper cream paint application with a little bit of a wash of the lips in there as well. And then the eyes have been given this lovely glossy design. We have a bit of black in there, some lighter blue around the edges to really bring the piece to life. And then of course we have the rest of the body as well. The entirety of the piece has been sculpted in his rather angry position. So we have him raising his claws there, which again, these have been given a little paint application, some dark brown, an excellent sculpt kind of. And then flipping around to the back, nothing really too much to talk about there. You have his little tail, and then of course these little sprouts there coming from the top of his head as well, complete with some holes at the very top. This is an excellent piece. He doesn't actually pose himself or anything like that. There's no movement. He is one solid little accessory. And sometimes he does have a bit of difficulty standing up. That's why he has a bit of blue tack there at the bottom of his foot because he is quite top heavy. The figure has been posed in this rather lurching forward stance and especially given the lack of high quality 13th Doctor merch out there to purchase, it is lovely to have a character to display alongside the main Big Chief. Next up, anyone want a hand? I make that joke in every single Big Chief review and it is never funny and yet for some reason I still do it. I don't know why, it's like a reflex. But yes, hands, ain't these excellent? I always find this shot a little bit creepy, I can't lie, because there's something just unsettling about having lots of hands in many different positions. But yeah, they're very handy for the accessories with this figure, of course in various different sculpts in order to hold the accessories. What is great to see is on the vast majority of these hands we do indeed have a little bit of bone structure which is 
has been included there, a little bit of on the back of the hand and the knuckles, which is great. That as you turn on the inside of the hand there, we do also have a few wrinkles on the palm as well, which is very cool indeed. Each finger does indeed have a few smaller details, which is very cool. Of course, some of the hands are more open than others. This is a rather regular open palm position. And then you have a few more closed ones for the likes of holding the sonic screwdriver. Very cool indeed. Some that are particularly too eye-catching, they're just kind of generic hands. You have a pointing one there. These have been sculpted in a rather flexible plastic, not too flexible, mind. Some of the previous ones have been a bit more flexible. Changing the hands is relatively straightforward and the same to most big chief figures in the past. So simply popping off the hands, normally I dig my nail underneath the joint just to make it a bit easier. It reveals the socket underneath. Sadly, there is meant to be replacements of these coming with this figure. However, they are not included. And then of course you can just pop the other one on top. Make sure that it is fully fixed in place in order for the ball joint socket to move properly. As with all Big Chief figures, this collector figure does also come with a display base, which is excellent for the shelf. This does, of course, include the extendable cradle, of course, depending on the height of your figure. Of course, a 13th Doctor is relatively small, so it pretty much can stay at the bottom. Trim of the base has once again been sculpted in a dark blue plastic, and in the centre, we have this reflective piece. This time round, we have the Doctor Who logo presented in a stacked formation. Of course, the previous Doctors, including the third Doctor, do have their number in Gallifreyan text. For some reason, they've decided to go with the Doctor Who logo for the 13th Doctor. I don't know if this is going to be a common thing moving forward. To be quite blunt, I don't really care. I never really have these turned on. As long as they hold the figure in a decent position, I don't mind. Electronics can be turned on by pulling the switch on the back. And with that, it reveals the Doctor Who logo glowing in orange, which I think is really cool, actually. I think it certainly stands out quite a lot. We also have the glowing orange of the BBC logo in there as well. And again, it kind of makes the logo look like how it does on the intros to the series as well, also glowing a nice orange. It should be noted, though, however, that in broad daylight, the glowing orange doesn't particularly stand out too much. In summary, this is without a doubt an absolutely excellent figure. The tailoring on the costume is superb and I love the way that it's brought to life the 13th Doctor's outfit for the one sixth scale. I love the smaller details including the rainbow on the jumper as well as on the coat but equally the tailoring on the costume overall is incredibly neat. All the various components sit together in a really authentic way but also the smaller details that aren't necessarily crucial the likes of the lilac lining within the jacket which are very important to represent the message that the 13th Doctor's costume is trying to convey. Equally the head sculpt is superb and spots an authentic likeness to that of Jodie Whittaker. As I say, I'm really happy to have this figure as a part of my collection, but without a doubt there are certain things that need improving, and Big Chief definitely need to change a few things when it comes to the future of their series. For a start, the braces at the back of the figure broke almost instantly when I got this figure out of the box, and to me the material that the braces are made from were definitely going to snap almost instantly. There is no way that that material was staying together, and to me that is something that should have been rectified very early on in order to make that not a problem. But equally at the same time, there is the production delays. Of course, over the past few years, there has been some rather valid excuses that have delayed production, the likes of the COVID-19 pandemic. But also before this, before there was those production delays, there was already problems. I pre-ordered this figure when I was in college, and at the current time of filming, I'm just finishing my master's qualification at university. The wait has been absolutely ridiculous. And yes, some of it couldn't have been helped, but equally at the same time, some of it definitely could. The delay problem now that has been prominent on quite a number of their Doctor Who releases, and in order for this line to continue in the future, I feel like they're really going to need to get better at releasing the products on a more regular basis, because I know people, and I myself, have kind of started to lose interest at points, having waited for figures that I've pre-ordered for such a long time. Even now, there is an incredible backlog of many incarnations that are still yet to be released. And there's lots of people that have pre-ordered, and yet are now put off the next following pre-orders, because we still haven't had our orders fulfilled from many years ago. So yes, this is a great figure, I really do like it, but equally at the same time, there are a few things that need to change. 
So there we have it, that is my review of the 13th Doctor 1-6 scale character replica figure signature edition from Big Chief Studios. I really hope you have enjoyed this rather long review, who knows, it might have even convinced a few of you to purchase this product for yourselves. Overall, I am really happy with it. It has been a long time coming, but I think that the overall figure itself is a lovely costume. I think they've excellently recreated it with all the various components, featuring those lovely little details like the lilac lining within the jacket, the various rainbow patterns, the patterning on the socks, but also the likeness to Jodie Whittaker is also absolutely excellent, complemented by a plethora of many different Series 11 themed accessories. So thank you very much for watching this review, I really hope you have enjoyed it. Do of course stay tuned on the host productions for regular Doctor Who content. And of course on that note, have a nice day. I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.